A staycation has become the buzzword for a holiday under the shadow of the pandemic. A chance for us to reconnect with the landscapes, towns, and villages in the UK. I have made a personal selection of ten that present in as many minutes the diversity of what is available on our doorstep. Whilst I have featured the Lake District, Yorkshire Dales, and Snowdonia. I have also explored areas away from popular places. York is bound to be busy, but I couldn't leave it out. But solace is found in the Scottish borders and Suffolk coast. Although close to London, away from weekends, the Surrey Hills can also be quiet. Of the Scottish islands, Skye might be the obvious choice, but don't overlook Arran described as Scotland in miniature, but quite often the weather is anything but miniature. No chance of having a bridge here to make it more accessible. The boat journey from Ardrossan on the mainland takes 50 minutes. Like Sky, it has mountains, but what they lack in size they make up for in appearance. Brodick is the main port. Its glorious sea approach is overlooked by Goat Fell. At its feet is Brodick Castle, and other neighbourhoods include Lamlash and Lochranza, which also has a castle, albeit a ruin, romantically set between mountain and loch. For the Scottish borders, I stay at Berwick-upon-Tweed. It is easy to get by bus to Melrose, Dryber, and I mouth, and as the bus started in England, I could use my bus pass. Melrose sits in the shadow of Eldon Hill. I was tempted to climb it. Instead, I walked a more level route to Dryber and explored its abbey, plus a classic view back down the River Tweed to the hills. I didn't meet a soul. The Scottish borders cover a wide area, including the coast at Eyemouth and at St. Abbs, when I walked to the headland. This is a fascinating area, and on the English side I followed St. Cuthbert's Way over the Cheviots. Featuring the Lake District might be obvious, but I cannot pass over Derwentwater, my favourite lake. Walk the tourist path to Friars Crag, and the fells across the water draw the eye towards them. Take the launch across. There are several stops, and stroll along the shore, or, for the more energetic, climb Catbells, which can be busy at weekends. Newlands, on the other side, is quieter. Don't water is magic in the morning, when a lower temperature and a perfectly still day will generate mist. In Yorkshire, my favourite dale is Swale Dale. It is narrower and looks more like a dale than its illustrious cousins. A feature of the dales are the many dry stone walls, with a barn in every field, and Swale Dale, especially around Muka, shows this feature to perfection. The classic view is from the road that goes uphill out of Thwaite to Keld. There is a seat on the left close to where I took these shots. Stay at one of the villages or Richmond at the head of the dale, and you can't do better. Keeping in North Yorkshire, my city choice is York, reluctantly turning down Canterbury, Chester, Liverpool and a few others. The cathedral, of course, is the highlight, but actually I prefer the architecture of Lincoln or Ely. But what raises York for inclusion here is the city, and there are numerous historic buildings that include the Shambles and, of course, the river, which unfortunately can flood. For the energetic, there are many steps to the top of Clifford's Tower for fine views over the city or walk the city walls. You won't be disappointed. Even the railway station is regarded as one of the best in the country.
The southern half of Snowdonia sometimes suffers from the supremacy of its northern cousin. Kata Idris is a great mountain, but it doesn't seem to have the same stature of Snowdon or the Glitters. However, stay at Barmouth, a popular seaside resort, and any misgivings about the scenery quickly evaporate. The beach can be crowded, but pop around the corner and walk to the Panorama Walk, and you are in a different world, and you can take a car if the hill is too steep. The view up the Marthek Estuary with Kada in the background is regarded as one of the finest in the Principality, and as a bonus, the famous Barmouth Railway Bridge is at your feet. This is a brilliant place for sunsets, and if feeling energetic again, climb Dinas Ole, the hill just behind the town, and wallow in the fantastic views from its summit. North of Chepstow, noted for its fine castle and a cast iron bridge Built in 1816, spanning the national boundary, the Wye Valley spends its time in both Wales and England. Offersdyke Long Distance Path provides an inspirational route to Tinton Abbey, located on the Welsh side of the river, and then to Monmouth. Continue walking by the river into Herefordshire for one of our most famous views at Simmons Yacht that says England. Far below, the Wye winds its tortuous route through the hills. Music lovers flock to Albra on the Suffolk coast, the former home of the English composer Benjamin Britten. His opera, Peter Grimes, is based on the town. The Suffolk coast area of outstanding natural beauty extends north to Southwold and Lowestoft, where Britain was born. To the south is Orford and Woodbridge on the River Deben, its iconic trademark being a tide mill. Woodbridge is a good place to stay for exploration, and Sutton Hoo, where an Anglo-Saxon boat was discovered, is just across the river. From the eastern seaboard, we move west to the tip of Cornwall and St. Ives, where an artist colony is busy capturing the magic of light unique to this area. That magic extends to photography, and being a peninsula, the sea is never far away, producing a quality of light rarely found elsewhere. St. Ives is busy during the summer months, but come early or stay late, and the place then reveals its true character. Even a trip to Land's End is bearable, the most southwesterly point in England. The Penwith Peninsula has dramatic coast walks, picture postcard fishing villages, and abandoned tin mines, the engine houses still clinging precariously to the cliff edge. I conclude with a touch of sheer indulgence, a landscape from my home area where I was born. The Surrey Hills area of outstanding natural beauty includes the North Downs from Farnham to Oxted and at Leith Hill, the highest hills in the South East. At 965 feet, it is not quite a mountain, but a tower erected in the 19th century brings the total height just above the threshold. At weekends, the Surrey Hills are popular with day-trippers from London. It is a landscape as fine as you would find in any other part of the country, particularly between Dorking and Guildford. There are no great mountains or deep lakes but an area having a quiet charm that does not have to shout its message. As a photographer who widely travels the country, it is a hard heart that cannot respond to the quiet pleasures of these hills.